Welcome to the Closing Act YouTube channel. Join me, Christine Blanchette, for in-depth interviews of musicians, songwriters, producers, and more. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to our channel. Joining me today is a very special guest, Michelle Paris, who's the head of children's programming for the Knowledge Network in BC. She's here today to talk about her role as executive producer for the new animated series for kids called Luna, Chip, and Inky Adventure Rangers Go. Welcome, Michelle. Thanks, Christine. That's a mouthful, isn't it, for a title? <laughs> well, you deserve it. And I'm so excited. Congratulations on the recent launch, which was April 4th, which is available across Canada for the new animated series. You're right. Yeah, Luna Chipaninki Adventure <laughs> Rangers Go, which is a mouthful for a four-year-old. It's our brand new series from Knowledge, Knowledge Network, Knowledge Kids. Um, and it's an animated 40-part series, so um, lots of adventures to come for the next year as we roll out new episodes um, for, uh, for kids, yeah. And Knowledge Network is, is the public broadcaster in BC, so if you're watching on television, that's where you're going to find us in British Columbia, but across Canada, um, we've got a wonderful app, the Knowledge Kids streaming video app. And um, people can download the, the free streaming video app and or they can also watch our shows on our um, knowledgekids.ca website. So lots of ways of connecting with us and getting the new content that we've got for kids. That's wonderful. It's a great resource for teachers. It is a great resource for teachers. And in fact, with the new Luna Chipaninki series, we worked with an educator. She was part of our production team. And she's trained as both an educator and a child de development um, uh, specialist. And she reviewed both scripts and um, the animation at the animatic stage so that we really could speak to kids, you know, four, five, six-year-olds about topics that they relate to, that are important in their lives, that are relevant to them. And she helped us, you know, figure out the, the language and also making sure that the takeaway, the little lessons in every episode are, are clear for kids, that they'll get it. Um, so yeah, the educator was a really important part of our team. And I think that teachers who take a look at the episodes online will you know, sift through and see that there are certain ones that they can really use in the classroom that will be useful for them to, uh, to help make learning fun. Yes, like Know It Owl. Know It Owl, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a really good one. Um, the song in that one is called Stick to the Script. So yeah. every episode has an original song and um, they all help drive home kind of the key message in the episode, but, um, but they are tons of fun. The, the song, the song writing, the, uh, the score and the original songs themselves were all written by a local Vancouver producer and, and songwriter, a composer named Daniel Ingram, who is mm. an, um, Emmy Award uh, uh, winning and Emmy nominated composer. So um, great music, lots of fun. Wow. And it's all in house, right? Yeah. So this was an in house production, and it's the first ever in house production that Knowledge Network has taken on because mm -hmm. usually our role is to work with independent producers, which we're good at, and we do. We work with producers across Canada. Um, but this was the first time that we that we uh, jumped in um, ourselves into production because Luna, Chip and Inky have actually been on our channel for the last 15 or so years as our little mascots, but mm -hmm. now they have a life of their own and a show of their own. Yeah. Yes, and you know, you're the ex executive producer. Now it takes a team. Can you tell us what, um, you know, your role so yeah, I I had a I had a, both a creative and a business role in this one. My um, uh, first job, first order of business was raising the production budget. So mm -hmm. raising the financing in Canada with pre-sales to other um, another French language channel and support from other um, film funding agencies, and then the fun starts. Then you get to jump into the creative side of things. So pulling together a team of um, writers, story editors, producers, directors, the music composer. And, um, um, and from then on, it was really a creative job. So I, I had a lot of fun um, sitting in on a weekly production meeting for the last year and a half, 
and uh, reading over all of the story ideas and the scripts. Um, and we worked with a really fantastic production partner, Epic Story Media, who was great. Um, and they helped us assemble a team. We had for um, the overall series direction, we had a woman series director, mm. which is great. Um, I'd like to see more women in the business of directing. And that's always a goal of ours is to help bring up new people, emerging talent in the industry. Um, and, and we also worked with a couple of really generous and warm, fabulous story editors, um, Shelly and Rob, Rob Pin Pincombe and Shelly Hoffman, who were fantastic at bringing in new young writers. So they were the ones that managed the writing team, the writing room. And of course, because of COVID, uh, we started this production back in 2020. Um, ironically, we started this production just as COVID was shutting the world down. So everything, including our writing room, was all done online. So we have writers from both BC, Ontario. We had voice talent from BC and across Canada. And all of it, because of COVID, had to be done at a distance. Um, but it didn't stop us one bit, actually. It, it actually opened up our, um, it opened the field up to having us um, work with talent in different locations, which was really, which was great. And it was a huge benefit to the production. So, um, so yeah, we did have to get over a few COVID related logistics in the beginning, um, especially with the voice recording of the talent. We had mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> some people, <laughs> who had set up uh, voice recording um, situations in their homes. One of them was doing it from a closet in their bedroom. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. That's so yeah. creative. Yeah. So. No lack of creativity on the show. So. Yeah. And, you know, was, was it inspired from our beautiful British Columbia? <laughs> you know, the inspiration behind it? You know, Christine, that was a big part of it. We, we wanted to do something that really, without mentioning British Columbia, but yes. because we're BC's public broadcaster, we wanted to reflect British Columbia. So there was a lot of attention put into um, the designs, the master designs, and, um, and that really shows in, in the forest and the lake. And um, I even made them draw in an Arbutus tree, which is, of course, mm -hmm. very native to the West Coast. So, yeah, reflects, reflects um, not only the setting, but the choice of animals, too, um, that populate this beautiful little world of Eagle Creek. So Eagle Creek, yeah, that's so yeah. beautiful, so inviting. And the, they play the heroes, right? Luna, Chip, and Inky, they are the heroes, the problem solvers. That's right. They're the key in every episode. Um, mm -hmm. They are a trio of really enthusiastic problem solvers. And it, every day they run across something, some little um, issue that they have to solve, a mystery or a quest, or someone needs their help, someone calls for help, and off the three of them go. So the, each episode starts with um, a transition. They go to their treehouse, they gather up a knapsack full of gear and stuff, and that is the transition from them. Um, as their little simple characters into their superhero role and, and off they go solving problems. So kids who watch them are watching as they um, really think about and work as a team, how are they going to solve these problems? And each episode has a couple of flops. They, they try something, it doesn't work, they regroup and they try again. So kids are really seeing how um, other kids, other kids their age are thinking about things and working through uh, till they get to a resolution of a problem. That's at the core of the, of the uh, series is their problem solving um, abilities and their real desire to help all of their friends and their, um, the fellow citizens in Eagle Creek. That's at the base of Luna Chip and Inky. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Michelle? I really hope that people who love music and who, you know, really want something fresh for their Preschoolers are going to seek it out on Knowledge Kids, Knowledge Kids, our app or our website, and um, just go along for the ride, the outdoor adventure, which we've all been missing for the last couple of years. Yes. And for more information, where can they go? 
just they can go to knowledgekids.ca, our website. They can find it right on our homepage. And they can also get links there to, um, to the app downloads if that's what, how, they want to, how they want to watch the show. Um, and they can also find us on Facebook too, Knowledge Kids. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thanks for your interest, Christine. Joining me is Vasily Prankikos. He is a Canadian multi-talented actor, dancer, singer, and he's here today to talk about his exciting role in the family musical comedy TV series, Take Note. Welcome. He's also going to be talking about what's next for him. So welcome. And I know I'm so excited to have you here on the closing act. And yes. so how Thank are you? you? How yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I've had a long day today, but I'm good. I'm excited for the interview and it's nice to be here. So thank you for having me. Yes. Well, congratulations on your role. Now, this is your first major role playing Miles. Is that correct? Yes, this was my first TV series. So it was my first time kind of being in the professional mm-hmm. environment, I would say. But, yeah. Well, I mean, you've been dancing and acting and singing at such a young age and you are young. I mean, so um, which came first? Yeah. So there was moments in my career where I would say that I felt most connected to what I was doing at that specific time. And dance came first. Just to answer that question right there. But <laughs> right out of the womb is something that I would always say. I'm like straight out of the womb dancer. You know, I, I, I kind of say that like nonstop. But yeah, I don't know. I felt most connected to dance right away, especially through a TV series that I looked up to and the people that um, were casted to be on it, which was called The Next Step, which was actually on Family Channel. So it was kind of a first a full circle moment to be on Family Channel through Take Note. But yeah. Oh, dance wow. I think you've. Uh, it was tap, ballet, jazz, hip hop. So was it tap that that you started with or ballet? It was more like of a hip hop contemporary vibe, something like that. And then after that, I kind of explored jazz, tap, hip hop, ballet, contemporary, like going into that and exploring more of that. But yeah, it did start with a mix of those two. Yeah. So having, you know, dance, acting and singing, you must be also in demand. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. A lot of people referred to me as the triple threat. So it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Multi-talented. So, so tell us about the role. Um, tell us, you know, the audience, what it is about. Mm, yeah, yeah, of course. Take notice about a 14 year old named Calvin Richards, who has a really close family and they're all really like close knit, I would say. And good thing because Calvin applies in order to get into Take Note, which is a show that he's always kind of looked up to. And basically Take Note is a show within the show and it's a tween singing reality competition. So basically throughout the summer within the show, Calvin's with his family and his friends, which Miles is actually one of his close friends. And they're just navigating through ups and downs of competitions and friendships, as I said, while being all in the spotlight. Wow. And how did you prepare for it? Yeah. So a a lot of people do ask me this and it's funny because (laughs) just right away, me and Miles were the same person. And I would say around in January of 2021, it didn't say Miles on my audition thing when I was doing my first recording, I would say, but yeah, just right away, I felt connected to Miles. So there was not really a moment where I had to tell myself, oh, I need to step into Miles' shoes or, you know, I need to find out what he likes because it was kind of already what I liked. And I don't know, we had a lot of similarities, which was kind of cool to see, but yeah. Yes. I mean, and that's what, you know, attracted you to the role because you're, you know, you, you're in character, but it's, it's like you as well. And um, so how much fun did you have, you know, with, with, the other you know it's a team environment right (laughs) yeah 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 exactly and I was so nervous I don't know why but I was it was my first tv series and my first time acting on a show so I was kind of nervous and I was kind of shaky a little bit but right as I got on set the cast and crew all of us like were connected right away and we we had I was really thankful to be um sat down with them for like I think we had like a two-hour period of before we like did our first scene which was the last scene which was funny because that's the point in the show where where we had to be most like connected but just right away we all like became a family and just after wrapping almost every day after that first day we would have dinner and we were were just really 
connected and we were we grew as a family so that yeah, kind of made me feel better but that's wonderful you know and, and and also it's like it's a lot of hard work behind the scenes and you and you know your passion but you know how like your family is, is very supportive of what you do and it takes a team as I said yeah yeah it's kind of something that always that I've like done so my family was just like whoa, whoa, like first series <laughs> and you know everyone I was supported by friends and family especially people from school they were all curious and kind of were asking me so many questions and I was like eh, like you know trying to like, answer them all at once even though it was kind of new to me too so yeah I, I was really supported which I was really grateful for yes and what has the feedback been like so far because it's on the family channel right NBC yeah, so it's on Family Channel in Canada and on Peacock, which is a TV network in the U.S. And yeah, just a lot of people have been saying how inspiring it is for especially for kids. And I would say that is because it follows Calvin and his journey to success and what he wants to do, and especially with his friends, too. So it kind of teaches you the moral lesson to follow your dreams. And that's something that even I took away from and something that it reminded me of while I was filming on Take Note. But I've been getting good feedback and especially me and the rest of the cast, everyone's so talented. So it's well, kind of so are you. And I, and I have to say this quote here, live life to the fullest. Yeah. That's something yeah. that I always say. <laughs> I always say that and that's such an important thing that I always carry with me. Yeah. Right. So, so tell us, um, you know, so what's uh, next for you? Like, I know um, probably a lot of projects can't really talk about, but is there, can you tell the audience some of the projects? <laughs> yeah, just to continue doing auditions and hopefully getting more projects like Take Note, because I was in, able to incorporate what I already had known with dance and singing and acting, especially, but yeah, just for my future, I would say just to continue, as I said, auditions and continue writing my own original music, which is something that I'm very passionate about wow. too. Just doing what I'm doing right now, which is also going on tour with Mini Pop Kids, which is really cool. Yeah. But yeah, doing what I'm doing just on a bigger stage, I would say, just to show more people what I can do and just to bring more smiles to people's faces. Yeah. yeah so now talking about Mini Pops, you, uh, your role was 2019. Is that right? Can you tell us about Cause that's exciting. The mini pops, right? Yeah. It's the number one kids brand in Canada. So it was really cool to be thrown into that atmosphere. I would say, even though take note was my first like TV, like professional environment, I was already thrown into a professional environment earlier with mini pop kids. I would say, cause we were doing a lot of music videos and that's when we started going on tour, but it got interrupted due to COVID mid through 2020. But yeah, just there's a lot of things that I did take away from Mini Pop Kids because we do sing and we do dance on stage for our audience is also kids. So that's a kind of another connection with Take Note. But I did learn a lot of stage presence and I did take away a lot of good things, which carried out into Take Note with my performances that I was able to do. But yeah. Yes, no, because everything leads to another, right? So yeah. So anything else you'd like to share? Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, no, just to follow me at... Uh, one Vasily on Instagram and yeah, I just do. I hope people feel inspired by what I do and I just want people to follow my journey and yeah. Yeah, you know, it's wonderful, you know, cause tap dancing, there's ballet, jazz, hip hop and you yeah. sing, you dance. So watch for more everyone and you know, and congratulations again. I, I think Thank it's you. wonderful and uh, I would love to have you come back and. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, bye for now. Bye. Bye. Here we are at the Vancouver International Wine Festival, the 43rd annual at the Vancouver Convention Center. And I'm going to be talking to the executive director and you're going to be checking out some wineries, so stay tuned. I'm the executive director of the Vancouver International Wine Festival, and that means I have to stay out of the way. I mean, you can see there's a lot of people, there's a lot of wine, there's a lot of logistics. My job is to stay out of the way. I have a great team of people. We have a couple hundred volunteers. We have the agents representing the wineries. There's an entire system and community uh, that brings all this together. Um, so for me, it's uh, making sure that everyone gets paid, things happen on time, and we're selling tickets, and so we're gonna, we're, we're back after you know taking last year off, and so it's it's uh, it's great. It's just been one day at a time to get here, 
Uh, and sometimes I think, is this some kind of nightmare where I'm going to be like staring at a Zoom screen when this is all over? It's so fantastic to be live in person again. How excited are you to be here tonight at the International Wine Festival in Vancouver? We are very excited to be back. Uh, I think a lot of people in the wine industry are very excited to be back. It's been uh, a long two years. That's felt like a more than two years, but we're glad to be back. What can people expect um, tonight? Well, it's very similar to other years. I mean, rather than 100, 160 wineries, we have 100 wineries. Rather than 16 countries, we have 13 countries. Rather than 800 wines, oh, we only have 500. But uh, so for the person that's coming to the festival, it's not going to feel much different. I think what they're going to really like is that the aisles are a lot wider because we're cutting capacity in half because we didn't know whether there would be any restrictions or not. There's supply chain issues. So we only asked for half the product from the wineries. So we're not going to fire capacity here. So rather than 2,500 people in the tasting room, we're only going to have like 1,100 people. So there'll never be more elbow room at the wine festival than there is this year. But it just feels good to be back and you know it's something for everyone and for someone who's new to the Vancouver International Festival um, where should they go what should they try first like you would suggest I always suggest go to a table without a lineup I mean what would be the like all the wines here are really high quality the average price is between 30 to 40 dollars and so it's not a lineup festival. I mean, that's the part I just, it's a wine tasting festival. You're gonna taste a couple dozen different wines. Sure, there might be a table you have your eye on, but if you see a table that isn't busy, it doesn't mean that the wine isn't good. And one of the things that's important about the wine festival is the winemaker or owner, the person from the winery is here. If that table is less busy, you get to talk to the person who made the wine. If it's a lineup, it's kind of like you have to kind of get out of the way a little faster. So that's one of the things I love is not only discovering new wines, but meeting the personalities, the creative people behind the, the wines that they've, that they've produced, which is, it's, it's, like, it's like getting to talk to the band when you go to a concert, and that's not easy to do. Uh, we actually have uh, a lot of our new releases, uh, our 2021 Sauvignon Blanc, our Chardonnay. Uh, we have our unreleased Reserve Pinot Noir, uh, which we're excited to pour, so it's very nice to get uh, get people's expression on their face, which makes us happy to be making the wine and get to see people enjoying it uh, after a, a long wait. I know, I can feel the energy in the room.